it is far past time for us to have an adult conversation about the subject. You gotta be so good that they can't ignore you, especially the ones that ain't done shit for you. Yeah, you know exactly what I mean. They stab you in the back and then they ask why you bleed. I don't trust words. I trust actions. I don't care what you heard. I'm not slacking. My name is Alan Robertson. This is Every Damn Day Fitness. Like, subscribe to the notification bell right over there. Share my videos. Subscribe to my second channel, Alan Robertson. In my opinion, of course, click the button below at the end. Thank you very much. So for those of you that were worried that we quit YouTube, we have not. We are moving to Florida, so it took about a week of organization and travel and all sorts of shit with the animals, blah, blah, blah. Um, for those of you that were worried, thank you for the messages. No, we did not quit. For those of you that were very fucking happy, fuck off. Anyway, uh, we need to have a real adult conversation about health, about uh, about society, health, obesity, those sorts of things, weight, weight stigma. Uh, we need to have adult conversations because it's gotten to the stage that adult conversations are just not only not even being had, but they are absolutely being looked down upon. And that is a very dangerous form of rhetoric in our society. Um, I recently did, not too long ago, a month or so ago, I did a, what would what was would be considered a debate, but we actually had a lot of mutual ground. So it was called Mutual Ground. It's by the creator Fattopia. And it was with Dr. Joshua Walrich. And I still follow him. I found we uh, disagreed on several matters. We agreed on several matters. Most of the science we completely agreed with because it's just science. He is an outspoken advocate against weight stigma and for fat acceptance, those sorts of things. He is a medical doctor. And he, I, that's why he is going to believe in the science. It's just, it, it is what it is. I saw on his Instagram the other day, a pretty interesting post and some interesting comments. The post reads, a healthy lifestyle won't always lead to weight loss because not all weight gain is unhealthy. And then he put, and not all weight loss is healthy. That is just realistic. It really is. Not all weight gain is unhealthy. If the person is underweight especially, or if they're adding uh, some muscle to their frame uh, that still falls within healthy parameters, that is healthy weight gain. It is just reality. That's where we need to start fucking living is reality because we are just not. Not all weight loss is good. That's just true. If you are already of a healthy weight and you are focused on losing more weight, or if for some reason you need to have a little bit of extra weight on you, which sometimes there is medical conditions that make it necessary to do so, that it, or if you're already underweight, weight loss is very dangerous for you. When you go to the doctor, one of the reasons why the doctor should weigh you is to see if you have gained or lost weight, because oftentimes, especially for a morbidly obese person or a person that doesn't step on the scale very often, if you have unplanned weight gain or weight loss, it could be telling of something else. You could be holding a lot of fluid. You could have congestive heart failure. You could have edema. You could have cancer. You could have multiple things, which is why the doctor should weigh you. Even if you don't want to see that number, turn around and let the doctor take their statistic. Them having the number and not telling you will not hurt you. It won't. It is just a, let your doctor do their job. I'm going to get to that in a second. But in the comments section, I found just I, there was a long string of comments and it started like this. If, quote, not all weight gain is unhealthy, end quote, then would this post imply that, quote, other weight gain is unhealthy, end quote? If so, in what instance is it unhealthy? That feels a bit fat phobic to imply, and I know you're trying your best to come from your old content, so just asking for clarification on the message. And after that, there's dozens of comments saying, yes, what are you talking about? You know, you're saying that there's some weight gain that's unhealthy. Of course there is weight gain that is unhealthy. Of course there is. It is just reality. It is just being an adult and understanding that facts actually exist. It re the, This type of rhetoric is the rhetoric that is hurting people. Of course there is unhealthy weight gain. Of course there is. If you are already overweight, if you are of a normal weight, like a, of a healthy weight, and you gain weight, that could be unhealthy. It could be. If you are overweight, it probably is unhealthy. And if you are obese, it is absolutely unhealthy. And if you are super obese, it is most fucking definitely unhealthy. If you are a five foot five, 300 pound woman and every pound you gain is unhealthy weight gain. Cardiovascularly, mobility wise, the pressure it puts on your joints, every pound you gain, if you're a 300 pound, five foot five woman or more, is unhealthy weight gain. It is absolutely unhealthy weight gain. It's just reality. We need to actually have an adult conversation. And for an adult conversation to happen, we need to enter the realm of reality. We can't be in this little bubble, this tiny little bubble where BMI means nothing. Uh, we're going to get to that in a second. Where, you know, 
everything is fat phobic even the comments from a doctor who is known for sticking up for you know sticking up for people against weight stigma in the medical profession his comments are somehow fat phobic now too you can't just take it as like oh well maybe he has a point no if he says anything you disagree with as a fucking doctor it is now fat phobic that's the problem like the, the a real adult does not just want to only hear what they want to hear. That's the problem right now. The fat acceptance community has gotten to the point for a major portion of it that they only hear what they want to hear. And that is extremely, extremely dangerous. We have people right now saying that the BMI is just complete bullshit. And while it has its issues, it absolutely does because it does not account for muscle mass, those sorts of things. To a certain degree, it is very valid. And the statistics found around it are extremely valid because the uh, the factors that make BMI not great for an individual on a large population level basis show very telling results because it's just statistics. It does not give a shit about a person's uh, body composition or anything like that. For instance, the condition most strongly influenced by body weight is type 2 diabetes. In the Nurses Health Study, which followed 114,000 middle-aged women for 14 years, the risk of developing diabetes was 93 times higher among women who had a body mass index, BMI, of 35 or higher at the start of the study, compared to women with BMIs lower than 22. Weight gain during adulthood also increased diabetes risk even amongst women and BMIs in the healthy range. The health professionals follow-up study found a similar association with men. Obesity and cardiovascular death. In a meta-analysis of 26 observational studies that included 390,000 men and women, several racial and ethnic groups, and samples from, US, from the U.S. and other countries, obesity was significantly associated with death from coronary artery disease and cardiovascular disease. Women with BMIs of 30 or higher had a 62% greater risk of dying early from coronary artery disease and also had a 53% higher risk of dying early from any type of cardiovascular disease. Compared with women who had BMIs in the normal range, 18.5 to 24.9, men with BMIs of 30 or higher had a similar elevated risk. These are not fat phobic. These are absolute truths. These are studies done over long periods of time with very large sample groups that are medical fact. They clearly show the association with having a high BMI of 30, especially 35 or above, for especially women of early death and disease. They absolutely show this. This does, It does not give a fuck if you want to believe it. Diabetes does not give a shit if you believe it or not. Diabetes doesn't care if you don't believe it. Diabetes is still going to come for your feet, your eyesight, and your life. That's just the fucking truth. It is going to come for you. It, a very, at an extremely higher rate if you are a woman, especially with a BMI of over 35. It is just fucking fact. I understand that we have many arguments against BMI. I've even stated some myself. They don't take into account muscle mass. They don't take into account a lot of things. I did, by the way, hear several women from the fat acceptance community clearly state that, well, the BMI was made for white men, so it doesn't apply to us. The logic behind that is so bad, it's unbelievable, because if you think about it, if you have two people, BMI is based off of height and weight, that's it. If you have two people, one male, one female, both 5'10", both with a BMI of 35, the chances that the woman has much, much, much greater body fat levels and is at much, much, much more risk than the male is much higher because women inherently have a lower lean body mass than men due to different androgen levels. It is just fact. It absolutely is. Dismissing of facts doesn't change them. When you dismiss realities, it does not change them. When you decide you're not going to be an adult and listen to medical professionals, it does not change shit. The problem, the reason why this needs to be talked about often is the rhetoric is going to start hurting people and it already is. I found this comment also this poor woman, who in my opinion, of course, by the way, is a victim of the fat acceptance community. Th this woman is being victimized by the rhetoric. She literally is. She says, I've been asked slash told by my consultant to lose weight for an operation I truly need. I have been working so hard to accept my body as it is for over a year. And yes, I've gained a lot of weight in my anti-diet recovery. What am I to do when I need this op? I explained my past disordered eating and haze, but he said it was out of his hands, a hospital policy. To point out just a few things, first, 
if you've been gaining weight, you're not actually accepting your body, you're accepting the food. Because if you accept your body, you're accepting your body as is. But if you've been gaining weight, that's not accepting your body. That is accepting your eating pattern. That is absolutely this. So, and I did block out her name because I believe she is a victim. She's not part of the problem. Because if you're part of the problem, your name gets mentioned. If you're a victim, your name gets blocked out. I believe she's a victim. And ma'am, if you watch this, please understand you are not accepting your body if you're actually gaining weight in this process. You're not accepting your body as is because your body is changing. It's gaining, gaining weight. You are accepting your food behaviors, which is causing the weight gain. That is not a good thing. That is disordered eating in and of itself, just, just to be very real. Please do seek psychological counseling and get the operation. Listen to the medical professional, not the person online that is spewing rhetoric at you. Listen to the medical professional. Listen to the medical professional. They oftentimes don't want to do certain operations on people with higher BMIs because the operation, the recovery from the operation and being on the table and stuff, is the risks are greater. They're, they're higher than the actual not having, the, the risks of not having the operation. That is why. And the hospitals cover their own ass. That's just the truth. But you should get the opera. You should listen to you. Get a second opinion. If the second opinion tells you to get the operation, get a third opinion. If you don't want to listen to that, if the third one tells you to get the operation, get the operation. Just, just be real. It's time to have an adult conversation. Being an adult is oftentimes hearing shit you don't want to hear. Being an adult is oftentimes accepting and assimilating information that does not necessarily fit exactly what you want to hear. Not everything can be tailored to you. Not everything can be that is told to you can be, uh, well, it's just, it fits perfectly with what I believe in. That's just not reality. That's just absolutely not it. People are going to disagree with you. And sometimes those people are fucking right, especially when they're the ones educated on it. When you say BMI doesn't mean anything, I can be 35, you know, 35 BMI or up and healthy. You are just saying shit. There's no facts to back that up. There's facts to the contrary. You stating it doesn't change the facts. It just means you're not being an adult about it. It means you're being a child stomping your foot down because you don't want to hear something bad about you. That, you know, that, that's, that's all that is. You ignoring facts does not change them at all whatsoever. It makes you a fucking child. And we need to stop having childish conversations. We need to start having real conversations. We need to start having conversations of, you know what? If a person shames another person for how they look, that person's a fucking asshole, no matter what. That person's a complete asshole. If they're just trying to make fun of you for how you look, whether it's because you're bald, old, fat, uh, too skinny, whatever. Women get made fun of all the time, mostly by, by other women. A woman can't be right. She's either too muscular, too thin, too fat, too this, too that. Where's her makeup fucked up? Her hair is this, blah, blah, blah. Women are brutal to other women. But if you make fun of somebody just to make fun of them, just to amuse yourself, you're just a fucking asshole. You really are. Make fun of, making fun of somebody's appearance, that's fucked up. Because oftentimes they can't do anything about it or they're struggling with doing something about it. That makes you an asshole. However, however, that doesn't change the fact that you need to have healthy endeavors in your life. Accepting who you are means accepting sometimes that you might need to get healthier. Fat acceptance in its start had a good premise. Accept me for who I am while you're trying to be healthy. I'm down for that. Stating that you that facts don't matter anymore, that you can't tell if a person's healthy when they're 400 pounds, that you know diabetes won't come get you, that's childish ass conversations that we need to get away from. We need to start adulting and having real ass conversations. And that's just my two cents on the matter. My name is Alan Roberts. Hit me up on Instagram at Alan Roberts EDF. Hit me up on Twitter at Every Damn Day Fitness. Also on Facebook at Every Damn Day Fitness. Damn internet at Every Damn Day Fitness.net. God damn.